Bridgeport Music Inc. versus Dimension Films in 2005 was a court case that proved the importance in defining American copyright for recorded music. The case was based on NWA's song 100 Miles and Runnin' and Funkadelic's Get Off Your Ass and Jam. Essentially, NWA sampled a two-second guitar chord from Funkadelic's tune, lowered the pitch, and looped it five times in their song. This was all done without Funkadelic's permission and with no compensation paid to Bridgeport Music, which claimed to own the right to Funkadelic's music. Bridgeport brought the issue before a federal judge who ruled that the incident was not in violation of copyright. The court's ruling and the rationale were declared as fair use defense. The use of a copyrighted work for purposes such as criticism or comment is not a copyright infringement of such work. A provision of the Copyright Act that grants copyright holders a sound recording had the exclusive right to duplicate such recording. The de minimis doctrine is relevant to the case because de minimis is a shortened version of the phrase de minimis non curat lex, which translated means the law does not concern itself with trifles. When applied to the copyright law, the de minimis doctrine basically means that courts are not going to concern themselves with trivial copying. The U.S. Court of Appeals from the Sixth Circuit reversed the decision and ruled that the sampling was in violation of copyright law. Their argument was that with the sound recording, an owner of the copyrighted work had exclusive right to duplicate the work. Under this interpretation of the copyright law, usage of any section of a work, regardless of length, should be in violation of a copyright unless the copyright owner gave permission. In its decision, the court wrote, get a license or do not sample. We do not see this as a trifling creativity in any significant way. This decision effectively eliminates the de minimis doctrine for digitally sampling recorded music in the Sixth Circuit and has affected industry practices. However, the court noted that the decision did not preclude the availability of other defenses such as fair use, even in the context of sampling. Thus, in the Sixth Circuit, defendants who digitally sampled may not rely on the de minimis doctrine to say that they copied such a small amount that they are not liable for copyright infringement. They may still argue that their use of the sample is protected under fair use, that is, that the use is transformative for a non-commercial purpose, copied only a small amount, or the original had thin copyright, and the copyright did not harm the market for the original work or its derivatives. This case is important because it was able to prove how important it is to clearly define American copyright law for recorded music. The court with this ruling created a bright line test resulting in an unlicensed sampling that would be considered a copyright infringement. In the United States, the case has been less favorably received. A number of district courts have rejected the decision explicitly or declined to apply it, including courts in New York, Florida, California, and Louisiana. The present value of the case is that it was seen as a victory for the producer of the phonogram. Since the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeal ignored the application of the substantive judgment rules in music sampling, the Bridgeport case was widely criticized and strongly criticized by academics and musicians and subsequently similar judges rarely applied to the court's decision.